Hello, everyone, and today we are going to talk about projectiles. Now, in the past, or the past couple of days, we've been looking at projectiles that have been fired horizontally, or projectiles that usually f start at a particular height and they fall down to the ground. Today, we're going to look at projectiles fired at an angle. So these are the ones that make a parabolic path with the ground. So this object is being fired at some particular angle here. Now, these angled projectiles are very similar to horizontal moving projectiles. The main difference is that now, with an angled projectile, you're going to have an initial y velocity. We didn't have an initial y velocity with horizontally fired projectiles, remember? Their initial y velocity was zero, but now we're going to have to worry about that. So let's take a look and let's break down what's happening when an object is fired at an angle. So I mentioned before that projectiles are moving in two directions at one time, and this is the same idea. If we launch a projectile here, as it travels up and over, it has a horizontal speed and it also has a vertical speed. Now as it goes towards the top of its path it's going to slow down vertically and then once it reaches this point right here in the middle on the way back down it's going to speed up vertically just like an object in free fall. So remember, before when we talked about throwing a baseball upwards or throwing any object upwards, this was an example of a free-falling object. Its velocity at the top was going to be zero, and its acceleration the whole way was going to be negative 10. We also discussed the fact that the time it took for the free-falling object to get to the top was going to equal the time that it took for the free-falling object to fall back down. This is the same case with a projectile. The time it takes for the projectile to reach the top of its path is going to be the same as the time that it takes the projectile to fall back down to the ground. Gravity doesn't all of a sudden change halfway through a projectile's motion. So it's going to lose speed at the same rate as it gains speed on the way back down. Also, the distance that the projectile travels, we're gonna call that our change in x. This is the range of the projectile. If I want to know how far uh, a catapult can fire, I'm looking for the range of it. I want to know its change in x. Now an angled projectile has the same criteria as a horizontally launched one. Remember, remember we said that in the x direction our velocity is constant. Acceleration doesn't happen horizontally. Gravity doesn't act left to right. That would be super weird if it did. So, because of that, our horizontal speed is going to stay the same, just like it did when we did our horizontal projectiles. So what I want to do now is I want to look at this moment here where the projectile is being fired. I want to look at that in a little bit closer detail if my pen decides to cooperate with me today. So, I'm going to come down here and look at that moment. So let's say that I am launching a projectile, I'm kicking a football, let's say, and I'm giving that football an initial velocity of 20 meters a second. I don't know why my pen is messing up today, guys. Sorry. Okay, 20 meters a second. Now let's say I'm kicking that football at an angle of 15 degrees to the ground. Here's my ground. We talked about vectors before, right, and about how an angled vector is actually composed of two other vectors. We have our horizontal part, which acts this way, and then we also have our vertical vector, which acts up. I kind of drew that off, sorry about that, guys. This vector represents our speed in the y direction, and the horizontal vector represents our speed in the x. So. If I wanted to take the speed of my football and split it up into its x and y velocities, I could use a little bit of trig. I know the length of my hypotenuse and I know my angle. So let's review Sokotoa stuff real fast because we did this before, but um, do 
do it again for you here. Write these out for you if you don't remember them. So S O H C A H T O A. So katoa. O stands for opposite. A stands for adjacent. Side to the angle that we're concerned about. So if I wanted to figure out my x velocity, that's the side of the triangle adjacent to my angle, so I would need to use cosine. So that becomes the hypotenuse times cosine of my angle gives me my adjacent side, and then for my opposite side, that's hypotenuse times sine theta gives me my opposite side. So for this one, with my picture, I would have 20 times cosine of 15, that's going to get me my horizontal speed, and 20 times sine of 15 is going to give me how fast my projectile is traveling vertically. So when you do these, make sure that your calculator is set in degrees and not in radians or you will get the wrong answer. So my horizontal speed is about 19.3 and my vertical speed then is going to be 5.2. So what does that mean for my projectile? So let's redraw our football with these values. So that means that when I kick my football I'm giving it a horizontal speed of 19.3. Now we just talked about how that horizontal speed doesn't change. So at every moment I'm going to have the same over velocity the whole time. Every one of these green arrows represents 19.3 meters per second. Now the thing that's changing, ooh, 0.3, sorry guys, meters per second. The thing that's changing is going to be my y, or my 5.2. So let's draw that in red. So when I initially kick the ball, I'm giving it a speed of 5.2 meters a second upwards. Now what's going to happen as it travels up? It's going to slow down. Eventually, until it gets right here where there's no more y velocity happening, there's no more increase upwards, right? So here, we say that our y velocity is zero. It still has an x speed, right? But there's no more y speed. And then on the way back down, it's going to gain speed again until here when it will land with the same vertical speed as what it launched with provided that it's landing at the exact same height this will happen so that's pretty easy and straightforward to understand let's take a look at a couple of other variables we're going to need to talk about one is going to be our maximum height Frequently with angled projectile problems, I'll ask you guys, what is the maximum height that the projectile reaches? That maximum height is going to be reached whenever your y velocity is equal to zero. So, let's revisit our kinematics equations. Remember, in the x direction, there's no acceleration. So the only equation we use for our x direction is that one. For our y direction, this is where we have acceleration happening. So we can have, we can use any one of our four kinematics expressions that we learned before to describe the motion that's happening in the y direction. So for angled projectiles, you'll always have to use two equations, one for the y, t plus one half, and one for the x. finish writing these for you guys if you don't have them handy. We're going to do a couple of example problems real quick and um, we're going to do one from the textbook. So if you have your book you can follow along with me but if you don't that's okay. I'm going to write the important um, things that you need to know up here on the board. Now I'll tell you we learned this equation here but um, we never use this last one with projectiles. I've never really used it to solve any problems with. We're primarily just going to be using these first three. So let's do a pretty straightforward one, um, and let's stick with the same football that I just talked about. So let's say I'm going to kick the football with a speed of 20 meters per second, and I'm going to kick it at an angle of 15 degrees to the ground. So what I want to know 
is how long is my football in the air? What is the range of my football? And what is the maximum height reached by my football? So let's go back and look at our picture of that situation one more time. This is our projectile. I already split this up. I gave it an initial speed of 20, right? This is 20 meters per second. But I already split it up into its x and y parts. I know for the y motion, my initial speed is 5.3. And for the x motion, my initial speed is 19.3. Oh, I'm sorry, this is 5.2. 5.2 and 19.3. So to figure out the x direction, or to figure out the, the range of my projectile, I want to figure out my change in x. How far did the projectile go? So in the x direction, we only have this expression we can use. Velocity in the x direction equals change in x over time. I know my change in x, but I don't know my time. So a good way to solve for the time a projectile is in the air is to figure out how long it takes my projectile to get to the top, and then just multiply by 2. So let's look at our y direction. The only thing that's going to affect how long the projectile takes to get to the top is going to be my y speed. So I have vyi equals 5.2. I want to know the time for when my projectile gets to the top of its path or when the final speed at the top is zero. And I know that in the y direction it's accelerating at this rate. So I can say final speed equals initial speed plus a times t. So for this, this is 0. Initial speed here is going to be 5.2. This is 10, and this is t. So it looks like when I do my math, 5.2 equals 10 times t, so time is going to be 0.52 seconds. All right, so now I know my time. Let's come back up here to our horizontal motion. So now I know my time, and I know my speed in the x direction, so I can figure out what my distance is in my x direction. So the change in x is going to be equal to 5, I'm sorry, 19.3 times the time I just found, which is 0.52. And when I do that, I figure out that the change in x for my projectile is 10 meters. All right, I got half of the problem. Or, yeah, because they also wanted to know how long the projectile is in the air. So I figured out how long it took the projectile to go halfway. So now I'm just going to multiply 0.52 by 2, and that gets me 1.04 seconds is the time for my projectile. Now the last thing is to figure out my change in y. All right, so the height of the projectile happens when my final velocity in the y direction is 0. So let's look at our givens again, 5.2. And a is, again, 10 meters per second squared. All right. So we can use this expression, vfy squared equals vyi squared plus 2 times a times change in y. That will help us to figure out what our change in y is. All right, so 5.2 squared is going to give us 27.04, oops, 27.04, and this is 0, so that just goes away. So that's equal to 20 times change in y. So 27.04 divided by 20, that gives me a height of 1.34 oops, meters. I'm a terrible football kicker, apparently. That's not very high at all. All right, so what I want for you guys to do now is try on your own 
if you have your textbook or if you can get online um, or not. Um, actually, don't do one from your textbook. I'm going to give you guys one to try. So let's say there is a kangaroo, and we're going to keep with the kangaroo theme of the last test. So let's say there's a kangaroo, and the kangaroo um, jumps. And when he jumps, it takes him 0.8 seconds to jump a distance that is 2.4 meters away. Now let's say he makes this jump at an angle of 33 degrees to the ground. So let's draw a picture of our kangaroo. I'm not going to draw a kangaroo because I cannot draw a kangaroo. Let's say this is our jump. He's jumping this distance, which is his change in x, which is 2.4 meters. And the angle he's making that jump at is 33 degrees. And I'm telling you that it takes the kangaroo 0.8 seconds to make this jump. I want you guys to find for me what a couple of values for this problem. What is the actual initial speed of the kangaroo? I don't want to know what is his horizontal speed or what is his vertical speed. I want to know what his actual speed is. And also, what is the maximum height reached by the kangaroo? So try to do this one on your own, and we will talk about the answers tomorrow. And here are the equations again if you didn't copy them down the first time. And have a good night. See you guys later.